so in the previous class we had completed ray diagrams the five ray diagrams of concave mirror right and we were about to go to the sixth one which is the last ray diagram for concave mirror so we'll continue with that anybody has any questions from the previous classes whatever we had seen all the ray diagrams So we'll continue then. So in this sixth ray, ray diagram, do you remember where the object will be? Between F and P. Yes, between focus and pole. So let's draw the diagram quickly. So my pole is going to be here. This is my aperture MN. <laughs> this diagram also I'm going to do a little bit of cheating. I will draw the object first. This is my object AB. And I'm saying that this is between focus and pole. So my focus is going to be somewhere. So let's see. Let's see the NCRT. Let me draw the same diagram. But like I said, you can pick any two rays from that position. So look at this. This is your thing. Which, which two rules they have taken? into consideration. Can anyone tell me, look at the diagram and tell me which two rules they have taken into consideration. Draw this ray diagram. Look at this one. Three and four, sir. Yeah, so they have taken three and four. Yeah, that is, you don't need to remember the three and four numbers, but remember third rule was when the light was going in the direction of center of curvature. So it went in the direction of center of curvature and came back through the same path. So of course, light will go this way. Actually, the reflected light is going this way. Let's do that. Sir, here then the light can pass through the focus. It can pass through the focus. See, uh, actually we could have taken this light also and some people take that parallel light, making the light go parallel and then it will go through the focus. But you know that the object itself will be obstructing the path of the focus, no? So it will not be a good idea to take that. And if you take it in the direction of uh, this one, a focus, that also you can do. We can do it in the direction of focus. So if the light is going like this, it will go parallel. But then to bring the other light, you have to take this as C over here and in the direction of C, of course, you can do that also. Like I said, any two rules can be taken into consideration. So you can make it both in the line of focus, but I think this is the simplest one to do. Take the center of curvature, third rule, and then the one with the pole. So we'll do that. Let's see. So this is my focus over here, let's say. This is the center of curvature. So the line of the center of curvature will be something like this. Okay, so the light ray starts from the A goes in the line of the center of curvature. It's going this way. 
but because it is in the line of center of curvature it will get reflected back through the same path and it will come back something like this so this is the direction it is going in right now the reflected light now another another pair another piece of uh, this ray of light what can i do i can make it go through the focus and then make it go parallel that also possible you will get the same a dash image over there but uh, the drawing will be a little complicated so better to take this one make the light go through the fourth rule normally i would say that avoid this condition but for this condition this is the best one because the object is very close to the mirror so take this one and then this is the reflected ray going backwards now tell me do you think these light rays which are reflected do they ever meet this side they are not, not even so. they are not even parallel not so. they are not even they are diverging away right they are diverging away so some if something some lines are, line is diverging away that means they were not going to meet at this side so that means there will be no real image the reflected light never actually meets but if it yeah so if it doesn't actually meet means it will meet behind the mirror over here so if you extend this and this reflected ray you will appear that both these lights are coming from this point over here In that point you can call it as the image of a which is a dash and we have learned from our experience that uh, image of b will always be on the principal axis so we can just draw the image something like this this is your a dash and b dash of course the principal axis is a straight line so you will draw that using a scale now let's talk about the nature of the image so what is the position what is the size and how, what is the nature tell me position is behind the mirror sir yes we can say that the position is behind the mirror that's enough to tell no need to go about how much distance away or all those things okay because behind the mirror there is no focus or pole so that we can say anything uh, some approximate position and exact position we will be calculating don't think that we are not going to calculate we will use the mirror formula and we will calculate exact distances also how far behind the mirror or how uh, far in front of the mirror those things will come but when we learn the mirror formula not now so for now approximately it will be behind the mirror that's all okay what else enlarged yes the size of the mirror is enlarged and the nature virtual virtual and erect yes virtual because it, the light rays which were reflected they never actually meet so this is a virtual image just like a plane mirror plane mirror also makes virtual images and virtual images by experience you should understand that uh you will see that all the virtual images whether it's for mirror or lens they are always erect virtual images are normally erect so this is virtual and erect okay so with this all the six ray diagrams related to concave mirrors we have finished let's move on to the convex mirrors now so for the convex mirror first position where the object could be where is that at infinity yes like always we will consider the object at infinity
and what does the mirror look like? Something like this. So the pole focus and the focus and center of curvature for convex mirrors, you remember, it will be on the right hand side. And uh, normally, whenever we consider the object to be far away, we draw in the middle somewhere like this. Not keeping it. But we can't keep the foot on the principal axis. We can, but uh, it's difficult because the object is far away. That's why your di diagrams will be like this. You will see the diagrams where if the object is very far away, that is at infinity, it will be kept somewhere, something like this. So what will happen to the light rays? Some light ray which will originate from A, it will go parallel. And parallel light ray, what will happen in a convex mirror? Do you remember the rule? It can't actually go through the focus. So it will get reflected in the direction of focus this way. So it will go upwards. So here also light will go, but since it is pole, at pole it gets reflected back through the same path. And from B, what happens? As you can see, parallel light again gets reflected back and it will appear to be coming from the focus. So these rules, once you have seen this already, I think this ray diagram should be easy for you to understand. Is that so guys? Are you able to understand this? Yes, sir. Okay, so in this case, where was the object? It was at infinity. Let's study the image. What's the position? Where do you think the object the image is formed? Will this reflected light? Yes. All the light from A and B, everything is meeting at the focus or not meeting actually. It appears to be coming from the focus, diverging from there. So the light actually doesn't meet, but it will be appear to coming from the focus. That's why the position of image is at focus. What about the size? What does it look like? Highly diminished. Highly diminished, almost point size. And the nature of the image? Virtual. We can say at the focus. So you should know that the focus will be behind the mirror. Remember that. Okay. Now size is highly diminished, like the people said. You can also call it as point size object image. And the nature is, see this, uh, it may not be visible like this over here because A and B both are at the same, it's a point size object. So in the diagram, it will not be clear, but you should know that convex mirrors always makes virtual and erect images, always, no matter where you keep the object. The image will always be virtual and erect. And this is a very important point to remember. So in, a, in, in your exams, they, you might get a question where they will say there is a mirror which always gives erect images. That means which image, which mirror they are talking about? A mirror which always gives erect images or a mirror which always gives virtual images. 
you think convex convex mirror yeah so you should be able to identify that as a hint to identify that it is a convex mirror most of the times they will not very nicely tell you that uh, you have been given a convex mirror or you have been given a concave mirror they will not tell you they'll give you some hint like that so always gives a virtual image or always gives direct or sometimes gives virtual or direct so if it is a mirror which sometimes gives uh, real images and sometimes gives virtual then it will be a concave mirror okay so this is your first tree diagram related to convex mirror so let's take up the second one in this case where will the object be because there is no yes because there is no other markers over here no focus no center of curvature so you we can't approximate anything we will be able to tell when we solve the problems that how far away many how many centimeters away those things we can tell but not any approximate ideas not so we have to either be very far away or somewhere close to the mirror that position we call it as between focus and infinity okay so between infinity and the pole sorry not the focus i mean i said that by mistake but between infinity and pole okay let's write it down object is between infinity and pole and i am repeating this again infinity does not mean on some other planet infinity could be just a few meters away for any mirror okay I think you should people should be able to do all this now. Should be comfortable enough with this. Focus, center of curvature, and this time object is close enough so we will put it on the principal axis like this. So let's say A is the head of the object and B is the foot. How? What we'll do with the light rays? We'll throw the light ray parallel, and again, can't go through the focus, but it will get. diverged away reflected away in the direction of focus what should i do next what is the other uh, light ray should i use to find the image of a one i went parallel coming from focus the other one we can take it in the direction of center of curvature so take your scale and put it between center of curvature and a draw your line like this so light ray which is going like this in the direction of center of curvature what will happen to the light it will get reflected back through the same path okay do you people understand this yes sir yes sir all right so where is it that it appears to be meeting at this place so this is where you your image will be virtually formed a dash is here so from this position you can just drop the image and it will be called b dash at this place a dash b dash is your image over here you can see that and light ray from the base that will go to the pole and get reflected back through the same path so that also put an arrow for that like this going in the direction of pole coming back from the pole after reflection all right image position what is the position guys 
between pole and focus. Yes. So I think we can learn. Getting a hang of it, you should know. Be between F and B. Size? What about the size? It's diminished. That is smaller than the object. And the nature again, like I said, for this convex mirror, it will always be virtual and erect. Okay, so we have. So everyone is okay with this? Quickly confirm. Give me a yes or no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. So all these ray diagrams which I have drawn and I will send it to you, you will try to practice it on your own. Like I have said this earlier also, unless you practice it many times, you will not be able to draw this comfortably. It may seem very easy to watch it someone else doing or watch it on the paper. But when you start doing it, making all the lines meet at the right place becomes sometimes a little difficult. So practice it for uh, yourself, okay? Try drawing all these diagrams. And maybe even you have, when you are playing around with some pencil, just try to draw some ray, ray diagram and identify where is the object, where, where is the image, what kind of, uh, what is the position of the image, size, nature, all those things. You can try to write it and practice on your own, in your free time also. All right, so we are done with the ray diagrams. Very important part of this thing. But now the interesting thing will start. Okay, now we will actually start solving problems. We will see the sign convention and right after that, we'll get to the mirror formula, which is this one. This is the formula which will help us to actually figure out how far my object is, how many meters or centimeters apart, and where the image will exactly be. Until now, we were only talking approximately somewhere between focus and pole or somewhere behind the mirror. But now, once you learn this formula, you will be very comfortably, easily be able to find out if I keep my object 35 centimeter away, where my image will be exactly. You'll be able to find that out if you know the focus, focal length of that. Okay. So we'll see all that questions. So not today, of course, we will see the sign convention, hopefully. But before we go into that, let's just uh, talk a little bit about uses of all these things. Uses of concave mirrors and uses of convex mirrors. Both we will see one by one. Okay, this concave mirror has one more name. Who can tell me what is the other name of this concave mirror? Have I said this? Concave mirror is also known as converging mirror. Can anyone tell me why would it be called converging? Sir, because uh, its rays meet, uh, meet each other at some point. Yes, see, so when you have a concave mirror like this, if you throw the light parallel, it converges all the light to a single point. So because of this property of this mirror to converge the light rays, it's called a converging mirror, okay? So if so much light is coming parallel and you have the ability to converge at one place, what can you think of? Can you think of any use of this con concave mirror? Where would you like to use it? Telescope. Telescope, you would not. Uh, okay, yeah. Some mirrors, yeah, you will use yes. At the back of the thing where you would like to project the image of something which is coming from far away, 
there are they are used in uh, telescopes also sir magnifying glass magnifying glass would be not a mirror it will be a lens right magnifying glass is transparent it allows the light to pass through so that's a lens we will study about that also then we go to the lens part right now we are talking about the mirrors where mirror will reflect the light so see uh, when when i said yes for the telescope telescopes can also be different types of telescopes are there so the normal telescope which you see which will be something like this uh, i don't know it's difficult to draw over here like it will have some lens over here and some lens over here two lenses the astronomical telescope which we, which is very cheap and common to find out that telescope does not use a mirror okay there is no mirror in that telescope it just uh, it, it has two lenses and using those lenses when you look at something you will see inverted image you will if you have seen have you ever anyone seen this kind of telescope i mean this diagram is really uh, bad but yeah some some telescope which opens up like this something if you have seen you can adjust the length of this thing by that you are actually adjusting the focal length of the lenses so if you see anything far away using this kind of a lens it's called an astronomical telescope every image will seem inverted so that is not in this kind of uh, mirrors which is normally cheap you will not find the mirror but there are some telescopes which use a mirror and there is a small hole at the top all the light rays goes inside from here all the light rays parallel and that they will converge at some place and through here you see from the top you are actually looking at that in a convert converged image which is more sharper than the direct image which you look into the cheaper mirrors uh, i mean to say cheaper uh, telescopes so maybe i'll see if i can find a picture or a video related to this kind of thing. Uh, inside the submarines what you see you know that's not a uh, yeah there the mirrors are used but they are just simple plain mirrors i think they just reflect the light they don't try to converge it okay so let's just see what's there in your ncrt book the concave mirrors are commonly used in torches can you think where is this coming in torches behind the bulb yes you would have seen that there is a bulb and behind that there is a shiny surface but why a concave mirror can you people imagine so that uh, that beam of light is focused towards one point in fact it is opposite see this so, yes go ahead tell me give it a try Uh, so that the light can spread see if you think about a simple small bulb which is there inside a torch the bulb is usually very small no if you have you ever tried to remove that shiny surface and just uh, try to glow this bulb yes sir so i used to do that experiment when i was a kid so if you have tried that you will notice that the light will be very dim it will spread out everywhere in all sort of direction light will be going so it will be very dim light it will not have that much brightness so once you put that shiny surface behind this what it does actually it is arranged in such a way that this light is actually at the focus of this mirror this light is at the focus of the mirror so all the light which is coming from here everything is getting reflected parallel so it actually makes all the light go parallel in one direction that is what concentrates all the light and makes it more brighter also and you are able to point the light in one particular position otherwise the light will be going in all sort of direction right are you people able to understand the logic behind this yes sir yes sir okay a similar logic is used in the headlight of the car also a car or a scooter or a bike whatever you have a similar logic is used there also if you just glow the simple bulb it will be very dim but when you put it at the focus of the uh, thing and then you put some shiny surface behind it 
you will see that all the light, whatever comes out of it, will get converted to go into one single direction parallel. You, you'll actually, you're focusing the light in one straight direction. So it's in the torches, in the headlights of cars, those things, this is where it is used. Search light, same idea, vehicle headlights to get powerful parallel beams of light. So it makes sense right now. So these are these three scenarios which you see, torches, searchlight, and vehicle headlights, they are because of the same thing which logic which I explained you just now. What do they do? All the light from there, which wherever it is going, they're all thrown away parallel. So anyway, straight line also they're going, but whichever things were going backwards or somewhere else, they're also thrown away parallel to the able to focus the image. So you use it in torches, car headlights, or search lights. For the same reason and then they are saying that there is another usage which is shaving mirrors where is this shaving mirror coming into picture can anyone imagine how or why is it used concave mirror why do we use can we use a convex mirror for a shaving mirror No, sir. See, the logic behind that is when somebody is shaving, they want to see something very up close, very close to the mirror. You will keep your face very close to the mirror. Now, imagine the ray diagrams. Close to the mirror means which scenario you are talking about? Very close to the mirror. Between F and P. Yes. So, you are talking about this last scenario. Or if you go a little further away, it will get inverted image. So when you are shaving, of course, you don't want to see the inverted image. So you don't want to keep your face behind the focus or uh, like somewhere far away from the focus because all these scenarios will give you inverted image. So nobody wants to see inverted face when they are shaving. So if you want to see real face, uh, straight, erect face, that's why you keep it between focus and pole. And that is what the optimum scenario. No? You want to keep the mirror closed. No one keeps the mirror very far away to see the, uh, while shaving because they want to have a very close up look. And notice that this scenario very nicely gives an enlarged image, bigger image. So everything fits well. You are, you are able to keep your face close to the mirror, you're getting enlarged and you're getting an erect image also. So everything is perfect over here. Imagine the same thing if you had taken a convex mirror, what would have happened? You would have kept your face close to the mirror. Would you? You will see erect image. That is fine. But what is the problem with this? Can anyone see the problem with this? Because the image. Yes, the image is diminished. It is smaller. We don't want to see smaller face while shaving. We want to enlarge it. We, have, we want to see very close up whether the shave went well or not. Whatever, right? So even for makeup, you will have same thing. Ladies will have a makeup mirror that can be a convex mirror, which you will keep close. A concave mirror, which you will keep close. Your face. Okay. To see larger. Sir? Yes. Tell me. Sir, in compare or at both places, we get mirrors like uh, in which we can see ourselves very thin, or sometimes we see ourselves very fat, or our face will look like swollen and those are. What kind of mirror are those? Yes, so those mirrors are not any uh, one type of mirror. See, when, when they are deforming your face, no, what they are doing, they are making the mirror bulge somewhere and then making it thin somewhere. So they're just combination of all these things, concave and convex. At some place it will be bulge. Where you see bulge, you may, there, your face may get widened or become short over there. And wherever it is like uh, concave part, it may, depending on how far you are standing, it may show you a bigger or a smaller image. 
at that particular position. So it's basically a combination. It's not like one straight concave or con convex mirror, okay? Yeah, so one more application would be for shaving. And I hope everybody understands the reason for that also, why we can use it for shaving mirrors. So this one, because we can see direct image, enlarged, direct image, that is the reason. And for these things, we are able to focus the beam of light. Sir? Yes, tell me. Under not enlarged and erect image shouldn't be right uh, between pole and focus? Something like that. Yes, it will be between focus and pole. Yes, so that's what, when you are using a shaving mirror, your face will be very close to the mirror. No? So you will be between the focus and the pole. That is where you are getting enlarged, erect image. That is why we are using this kind of mirror for shaving. Is that, is that what you were asking or did I uh, misunderstand your question? Tell me again. Sir, I was asking you to write it under that. Uh, not, uh, your voice is also not clear. Uh, Pragati, can you repeat your question again clearly, slowly? Sir, I'm writing in the chat box. Right. No, but now when you are speaking a little bit loudly, I'm able to hear you. So you can try to explain your question. Sir, I was asking you to write like uh, between pole and focus right there under enlarged and erect image. Okay, write it over here. Okay. You want me to write it over here? That's what you're saying? So because that's the main point for the shaving mirror, no? See. When we are that when you consider that that is a main point, what does it mean? We are when we are talking about this mirror with the perspective of using, no? we, we are using it for uh, seeing our face. So the person who is seeing it doesn't care whether it is between focus and pole, but of course it will be close to the mirror. That's what it will lie between focus and pole. So yeah, so you can let me write. So I will rewrite all these things in a better handwriting and I'll send it to you later, okay? I will correct all this. Fine, so you understand the logic anyway, right? Concave mirror, why convex cannot be used? Convex cannot be used because it gives a diminished image. We don't want diminished image for this kind of a thing. And uh, why can't we use uh, convex for this inside a torch or a car at light or a searchlight? Anyone think the light will get diverged, sir, so we won't be uh, able to see clearly. Yes, very good. Because convex lenses are diverging lenses. Okay. So I will write it as a note. Convex lenses are diverging lenses. So they diverge the light in all away from each other, so you will not be able to focus the light. That is the reason we can't use it for a torch head light or anything. <clears throat> and one more thing you should understand, when I said that they are used inside the car headlights, see the modern day cars, no, they will not use a perfect concave uh, spherical mirror. They don't use that actually, okay? What? Yes, tell me. Sir, car rear, uh, like rear view mirror. Oh, your voice is breaking. I'm not able to hear you. Sir, rear view mirror. Rear view for mirror. car. Yes, that will be uh, actually a convex mirror. We will see that tomorrow. 
questions anyway we have exceeded the time so i don't want to take that topic right now that is the next thing we have, we have today we have seen the uses of concave mirror and the next topic that is what we will see tomorrow okay Con uses of convex mirror so actually it is the convex mirror which is used in the rear view mirror okay yeah but what i was saying about the car headlight is in the modern day cars you don't use a perfect spher spherical con concave mirror okay they use parabolic shapes which are more uh, like they are able to focus the light in a better way compared to simple spherical mirrors okay so but you should understand that concave mirrors can be used but the modern day cars they use even better design they use parabolic or uh, some advanced design for that which are able to focus the light in a better way so that was just an extra piece of information you should know but for your ncrt and board exams car headlight means concave mirror okay that is the usage all right so anyone has any other questions sir uh, for shaving mirrors if the object is not like close to the mirror then how will it look like yes it will be look like it will look weird like we have seen the ray diagrams if somebody has a, a shaving mirror which is a concave mirror concave mirror if you keep your face little further away what will happen if you exactly at the focus you will have a very enlarged image but still your face will be upside down you know right this is a real and inverted image and the moment you cross beyond the focus it will still be enlarged but it will be behind the mirror it will be on this side of the mirror we don't care about that but the thing is it will be inverted image still so when you are using a shaving mirror you don't want to keep your face at the focus or behind that you should keep your face between the focus and the pole keep it close enough yes sir okay anything else anyone has any other questions all right then that's it for today guys i'll see you tomorrow thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir see you guys bye bye